Good morning, Rab Boisai. Ah! It's a Gavala good day today. All the Chutzlikim, they're back. They're able to watch. They're able to be with us. We missed you. Today's Shir sponsored Paris Achoydish, Shmuel Yech, in honor of David Zlatnik, F200, Kiva Salkowitz, F94, Shalom Rand, who just left last night, F202, Shmuel Davidowitz, B202, and the official Eight Minute Daf Yomi Committee for my awesome, loving, and caring husband, Glenn. Today is his birthday. He started learning and enjoying his Shir just a short time ago. He loves every minute. Rebelli, thank you. Ari K, for my children to learn Torah. Just in Ivri, just in Ivri. Chalitzir al-Basir Echanon, Umilka, Lezibuk Hagon, Amen. Thank you, sun and shine. Lil Nishmas, Reb Chaim ben Moshe, Lebrei. By Avi Mandelbaum, the one and only, in honor of the amazing life of Rav Moshe David Temlu, who is Nifter over Yontif. His dedication to teaching entire science and ethics should serve as an inspiration to us all. Is the Shama having Aliyah and a refuel statement for our good friend who's now in the hospital, Binyamin Ben Rachel, Benny Gittelsberg. <clears throat> All right, so running a little late. That doesn't mean we can't read 10, 15 emails here. George Zar. Dear Rebelli, I want to thank you for making Dafyomi fun, enriching, and accessible to hundreds of people around the world. I turned 50 this past June and realized that shamefully I never got to finish a Masechta. I came across your share in one of the five town WhatsApp chats and figured that if I get a free Gemara, I'll have to use it and finish it as opposed to the ones I purchased in the past and end up losing steam after a while. I mean, if I take the free Gemara and not use it while well, it could have been used by someone else, oy vey. So I hopped on the daft train and been loving it since. I paused in the last summit and made my scene this past Thursday in the sukkah on my mother's yard site. It was very emotional for me. I actually choked up a bit reading the Hadron. May Hashem give you and your family credit to keep daffing. Chazak Baruch, when I didn't simcha, Dror Zar, Woodmere, New York. Here's Dror, this is when I visited Woodmere. And here is the Siom in his soka. It's beautiful. It was just, can you imagine, it was just yesterday. <clears throat> huh? How do you pronounce this name? Baruch. You say the name. I don't know how to say this. Okay, Baruch. W A J S F E L D. Where's what? No, what's uh, Shlufrach? Bar, this is by Baruch Shlufrach. W A J S F E L D. Shlufrach. I used to only listen to the Sheer, but didn't really follow along once I started watching the Sheer. I'm hooked. And a doima shmiliria. Yossi Klein's father, who doesn't have internet access, only listens. So this is a message to Yossi Klein's father. You got to go online and see it. It's a lot different. You're missing most of the sheer. Especially when I say the green goes to the blue and the blue to the red. <coughs> this is from Murray Stern. On one of the, the last days of Sukkot, six or seven guys from Ramada Shkol, you know, the, the, those, uh, the Ramada Shkol Chavra, the American Gishmaki guys, the living Ramada Shkol. So one of them is Uri Stern. So he just wrote, it's such as Yochel, Jonathan Stefanski sponsored today and said because Stefanski went from Tuna to Tyra. Just tonight I met a cousin of yours, Chaim Stefanski, his father's the owner of Dagim Tuna. And I asked him if and how he's related to you. He answered me that it's so crazy because everyone used to ask him if he was related to Dagim Tuna, but now they ask him if he's related to you. I guess all Stefanskis are feeling it. <clears throat> P.S. I did not ask him if he makes Abdul and Kestel. Kestel, good kvital uri. Truth is, I, I'm basically done. My job is over. That was, I had one goal in mind. <laughs> this is by Sholem K. It's hard to read these from Rab Sholem. I'm still laughing how Hashem showed, don't be so fast to judge. Basically, last email I wrote to you that he deserves a shout out, that he got someone to start the daf, not, from you, not to go to your shit, but to go to a different one. And if you really care about Torah, you'd be happy. And then he goes, that Akash Baruch got him back that he works for this chesed organization and his partner in crime decided to go work for another chesed organization and he really felt terrible even though he's helping out Yidin. So Akash gave him a nice little this and he goes like this, this is Chashev. Uh, 
I just canceled my Netflix. Thanks to you. Keep the guy going. I love it. Somebody asked. I have to ask uh, Rishos. Okay, maybe we'll say it tomorrow. I have to ask. Mark Ashkenazi, remind me to ask Rishos for something. It's about Netflix. What? That's for sure. Look who's here. All right. Uh, my name is Mark Mellis from Philadelphia. My brother-in-law is Josh Perlowitz. I'm the Zaydi of Rafi and Akiva Miles from who the Daf Yoimi was sponsored this past week. Thank you very much for the chesed. I only now found out about Yeshir, plan to arrange and joining on the upcoming Rosh Hashanah, Mesechta after Sukkot. Ah, oh, it's already got him. Got him. He's going to push it off until after Rosh Hashanah. Oh, yeah, yeah, to the beginning of the Mesechta. Start today. Over Yontav. When is everybody starting their diets, Rabbi Isai? Tomorrow. Next year. After, Shabbos. after Shabbos. After Shabbos. Never works. You start now. Over Yontav will be a transplant. So I hope it went well, the transplant. What, what happens to the brother? Like, you don't even ask him a choice. You just say, hey, by the way, you're giving a transplant to your brother? That's how it works. I don't know. Like, you talk to him, sit him down. It's a little kid. Over Yontav, if possible, please make him a shaber for those two grandchildren. The recipient and the donor. Eitan Rafal Shraga Ben Dinasara and Akiva Moshe Ben Dinasara should have Rafua Shleimo. All right. Mark Mellis. What? Oh, Josh Perlis, that's you. Okay, Gival, you know, I put it together. I throw out these names, I don't know what I'm saying. We don't have any more time for email, so three more only. Molandi, it's hard to keep up with the daf over Sukkot. Oh, you better believe it. A lot of people struggle with the daf over sukkah. So what do you do, Rabbi Isai? <coughs> I'm sure people miss the daf here and there, or maybe seven, eight daf. Brand new Mishnah today. Brand new sugi. Just start from here. Write down what you missed. We'll make it up later. And Yosef Ehrman sent me something beautiful. Somebody wrote him yesterday that Shnai Mikir Vechot Targum, is so true. It always falls out. The parasha Bereish is the long, a very, very long parasha. And you also, you want to start with the Brents. You want to start with all the Rashis. And it takes forever. And you only get like two days because Simcha Star is usually middle of the week. So the guy said, start from Hamishi. Just go from Hamishi on and just keep on going. Forget it. And a lot of times that's a way to trick the Yitzhar. You don't need that perfect. If you chop out the perfectionism all the way in the beginning, you start from Hamishi, then you have nothing to lose down the line. All right, fine. He's saying that Rabbi Yudah, and he's 100% right, and when I was learning it, I knew it, but when I said it, I said it wrong. Shalmeyah Silver says that I said that Rabbi Yudah Nisiyah was Rabbi HaKadosh, and it's wrong. He's the grandson of Rabbi. He's 100% right. More? More? Okay, listen. Shachar starting a little later. Oh, it's the Rivnitz's Rabbi Yardzai today. Psh, I'm not going to read the rest. Wow. Unbelievable. How many years? It's 36, 36 years ago, isn't it? Wow. So, look up the Rebbe Zerebbe. My father used to go to Rebbe Zerebbe. Now, my father is a Misnagin. He doesn't like very many Rebbes. But the Rebbe Zerebbe loved. And he would take me on Matzah Shabbosim. And we'd go there and the Rebbe Zerebbe, I would sit on his lap. Many times sat on his lap. And he did a whole Zach. We're not going to go into it. But anyway, so we had a... a Morchem David was there. His brother-in-law, I remember. Different people. There. But okay. We used to go. We made Avdallah. And like go like maybe an hour after Shabbos, and we show up just in time for the start of Mincha. That's how it was by then. Pull out the Sefer Torah at ten o'clock at night, and it's a whole zah. Brand new parak, Rabbi Isai, not just the Mishnah. Brand new parak. Hamevi kadi yayim imakim lemakim. Daf chavtesam beis on the bottom. Right for those of you that missed all the dafim, so you probably left off at about chaf somewhere. So we're holding up Chavtes on the base in Mesechtes Beitzah, by the way. Hamevi kadi yayim emakim lemakim. Lo yeviyim b'salu b'kupa. On Yantif, we have to make a distinction and show that it's Yantif and show that you're not really doing a malacha, just to, to show some sort of hecker. So you're schlepping bottles of wine from one place to another. Don't put them in a box. Rashi says three, four. It's not so much the amount, it's the way you're doing it. Carrying boxes around the Zuvda the Chal. Don't put it in a basket. Ava maybe you are safe or you can put it on your shoulder. 
Rabbi, I remember that Yoni gave me permission to use his pictures. I spoke to him directly. So here is beautiful pictures from Yoni. The, he sells the Mishnah. He says, go out and buy this great stuff. Here's the wine. Here, by the way, Castell. I don't know how Yoni Chav to do it, but he's carrying a bottle of Castell. And the box over here is Castell. It's unbelievable. Unreal. He's, Mamash, he's a true artist. Same thing if you are dragging, you're carrying straw. Don't put it behind you. Yoni's into trailers also, I see. It's unbelievable. You can carry it in your hand just like this. Put a little pole here. I'm not exactly sure why. Okay. Maybe he holds it in front of it. So if you typically would do it this way, do it this way, typically that way, and then what's you're going to see in the Gemara. You could just go to start out with, Matchilin, you have a, a pile of, of straw, which you didn't designate for Yantif. Could be it's Mokta. It's just sitting there. You could go grab some, some straw. Mokta over here, Rabbi Yisai, is a little different than what you think. Mokta is... Here in Eretz Yisrael, this is not the greatest picture, but if you were ever on a moshav in a tzimmer, so a lot of times you see they have a house, and then they have this huge meshek in the back. It's called a meshek. It's more, it's a back backyard. You, you never go there. It's like that's where they build a tzimmer in. If you have one of these, you, you build two or three houses in the back and you rent them out. This is a, a mukta. They have wood. Yoni has a picture. I'll show you Yoni's picture if you want. It's a little bit better than that. I just want to describe it in today's terms. So here's your house. And here you have the mukta. You have a, a pile of straw there. You have some wood, some storage. You're not really going there all the time. You're not, that's not where your kid's swing set is. This is uh, more of a storage place. You can't take wood out of this pile. You can take the straw from this pile, but not wood in this pile. And we have to understand, is there mukta? There's no mukta. That's what the Gemara is going to... Discuss here because it seems like a contradiction almost. On the one hand, you can take straw, so there's no mukta. Can't take wood, there is mukta. <laughs> if you don't have a choice, so listen to this, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a chiddush here. If you don't have a choice, in other words, you have a lot of guests, you got to carry it on your shoulder, you have to carry it in a box, you carry it in a box. Does this halacha apply to Shabbos also? But because I told you it's a chiddush, you all know the answer. Yes. On Shabbos as well. If you have an Erev, like Rashi points out in the Mishnah, you're talking about there's an Erev. There's no, it's not a problem of carry. The problem is that it looks like you're, you're trying to sell something. But on Shabbos, the Shukhanor of Paskins, you have a lot of guests, you carry it. You carry it also with a box. Ask him Rav Mechayza. So Rav instituted in Mechayza. The Daru, Beduchka, let's change everything around. Let's make everything different and easier. Sometimes it's not easier, but for the most part it's easier. But let's change it around. If you carry stuff on your shoulder, beduchka on your shoulder, lidru beraglo, beriglo, beraglo, use a pitchfork. It's a different type of pitchfork, some sort of device that makes it easier. In our days, let's just call it a wagon, one of those carts in a, in a, in a shop. You usually carry it like this, push it in front of you like that. The door beriglo, if you usually use a pitchfork, lidru beagro, use a pole with why is it out of order here? No, you're right. Here. You guys remember this poll? Two people carrying something. This is how you should carry it with two people. Yeah? The door of Agro, Lidru Akpo. If it's two people carrying it on their shoulders, the two people should carry it lower down. The door of Akpo, Nifrois, Sudrilove. Now, Rashi points out some of these are not 100% easier. But it's a, definitely a shinui. You typically do it this way. If everybody's carrying in a certain way, that's your, that's your minog. So change the minog. What? Where, where, where? Mm-mm. No, but shnei b'nei adam. Ba'agun nevi nesudri levei. The dor ba'akva, nevi nesudri levei. If you carry it uh, with... Uh, Two people, but lower down. Now we're going to do something else. We're going to put a flag on it. Put something on it. But you don't have it. You don't have a. You don't have a. You don't have a shmata. You don't have some sort of. You don't have a pole. There's no iser here. 
We're just trying to change it up a little bit so people know that we're dealing with the other. Don't remember. If you can't change it, it's okay anyway. So he said to Ravashi, when whatever you can change, change it up. There are women who fill up their buckets on Yantif. They don't do any change at all. Nobody says anything to them. They're, tell me what you want them to do. How should they change it up? If they use huge five gallon jugs and you're going to tell them go, go to the one gallon ones, now they're going to be walking more. So not only, there's no change because at the end of the day, so Altaisis points out, the point is you didn't change anything. At most, you made it worse. Because sometimes these women, they use one gallon, five gallons. Nobody's going to know the difference. There's some people that are not as strong as others. I saw this, uh, this Meshuggah guy that, that, that takes water. He could do five, five gallons. In one hand, he does three like this, and then two. Okay, so some people do it this way, some people do it that way, some people do it one gallon. But you're making her walk five times the distance. So you didn't gain anything. You just made it worse. And if she's a type of person that's weak and uses the one gallon, tell her, okay, fill up the five gallon. Now you're making it heavier for her. It's also not good. So what are you going to say? You should use some sort of lid. It's going to fall off the jug. And then she's going to bend down and pick it up and carry it. So, so, so oh, use a lid and a string. Uh, it'll be undone and she'll make a knot on Shabbos. Now you ruined it. Yosef Chorbev Seda. Tivir Sudra. So put a flag on it. Tivir Sudra. You know what happens when you put a, 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 a piece of clothing on top of an open pail? The clothing goes, it dips into the water. Now you squeeze it out. Over on, on Milabin. Which is Milabin. There's nothing you can do. There's no, there's no, there's no hate here. What you can't change anything. Just let them do it. Only Rava bar Rav Chonin Labaye. Different Rava. The Rava, the son of Rav Chonin, tells about. So now we learned in the Mishnah. Rabbi Say, listen to this Mishnah. We're going to see it soon. It's in another five, six days. Ein mitapchin ve misapkin ve miragdim. It's also to clap on Shabbos and in Yontif ve misapkin, and you cannot whack your thigh. Drum. They and you can't dance. Why? Because you might come to fix your instrument. But you see that people all over go to Shul and the is clapping away and the drumming on the tables and that the Shabbos meal is doing this. Oh, we're going to get into a second. And nobody says anything. Oh, so we got to talk about this for a second. Then the Gemara is, You don't tell people to stop drumming. A lot of guys like to drum on Shabbos. And as a matter of fact, I was by Suda with, with uh, Noam and I told the son, the son was, oh, okay. And then he, five minutes later, he did it again. So his brother came up and said, Ellie said, he said, I almost forgot. So was I over or not over? It's a big, so somebody that's been Kabul, so you tell them, you're not supposed to drum, you're not supposed to clap. But there are people, there are many people that clap, the whole show claps. They, 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 all, they, they all bang on the table. What's going on? So the Shulchan Aruch, I just want to say this like this. Shulchan Aruch says, Paskins, you're not allowed to clap today. Today, you're not allowed to clap, you're not allowed to drum on the table. But the Ramah says, but, but people do it. So maybe... He doesn't say it's mutter. He says maybe they use this taisvis on daflamin and beitza. That's what the Ramah brings. And Taisa says that in our days when we don't have instruments, we don't know how to fix instruments, this xeris bottle. Have you ever heard of such a thing? That xeris bottle? Today we have this, you can drive a car. Because it's not, you're not going to turn on a fire. So oh, you can start driving cars. So who, who's mevat xeris? This is Xeri the Rabbana. They said you cannot clap your hands because you're going to come to do Klesheer. So yes, it doesn't apply today. So we have to, we have to find the head for everybody. 
So Ramosha Feinstein says, uh, Ramosha Feinstein says a beautiful thing. He says that any Xerah the Klai Yisrael didn't accept, so we, we, it doesn't become a Xerah. And from the fact that you see in the Gemara, that in the time of the Gemara, people still weren't mocking on it. And the Gemara tells us, don't tell them anything, because it's better they should be shaggy than mazed. So they never accepted it. Yes, they were bad people. They were bad. They weren't Mechavah the Xerah. So then later on in our generation, when the instruments, it doesn't apply the whole thing of the instruments, then the Xerah was never there l'chatchila because of those bad people. That's as far as Ramosh Feinstein wants to say. You want to be Soymech on these Sfaras? Great, go ahead. I won't, I it can't be, mo- what? Ramosh Feinstein said Sosa. No, Klai said was not Mechavah. It's not the... Ramosh Feinstein asked me, Shabbos, Klai said was not Mechavah. Oh, Klai said wasn't Mechavah. I hear but that I don't know if, but that's not Xerah the Ramosh He can't make Xerahs Ramosh Shafai. We're talking about the time of the Gemara when they make Xerahs. Now, one thing I did see that Ishal Avram says that during Tfilah, he says maybe you could be matter to clap, like breast live and a lot of people, a lot of uh, a lot of people in Shul, they clap. Once in a while you see a guy clapping. So he says because you see that on Simchas Torah you let it clap, you let it dance, and you let it clap on Simchas Torah. So it's better that if you do it for yourself, for some story, I don't know, some, some svar like that, that if we had the svar before, that if for your table you have it, you should have it for Hashem's table. So maybe for tefillah, he says, maybe you can be matter for tefillah. I'm putting it out there. You do what you want to do with what I just said. If, Shino, yeah. Shino is, Shino is different. Yeah. What? Very low. Oh, I, I want to point out something else. We have in our shul the uh, the crown, and it has bells on it. How, what about what about making noise with the bell? That's mamisha prowl. That's a mamisha cliche. It's lotzal. <laughs> no, it's a real bell. So the heter is the heter. What? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. This is not a secondary. You're holding a bell in your hand and it's making noise. You're not gonna walk on Shabbos with a bell and it makes noise. It's secondary. No such thing. So the Mishnah says you're allowed to because it causes people to stand up from their spot and then give cover to the Torah. It says Rav Shalom Zaman Arbach, it doesn't apply today because people are standing up anyways when the Aron Kodesh is open and nobody stands up because he hears the bell. So Rav Shalom Zaman Arbach says it's also to use the bell on Shabbos. And then Rav Ozzah says it's not true. It's only a big large bell, but these are tiny little bells that it's not, it's not, it's not important, the sound is not important. Yeah, fine. Ad Khan. That Indian, but everybody be Mayan. And of course, the people that are used to doing it are not going to stop doing it. There's a guy, Dafyami guy, saying his shtus. My father did it, my whole shul does it. I'm continuing to do it. I don't care what the Shulchan Aruch says. Next. Come <laughs> on, this shaita, this litvak doesn't know what he's talking about. But else we do it as I. Fine. What? They can do whatever they want. You're not allowed to tell them though. If you see it in shul, you don't go over to anybody and say, hey, the, the Shulchan Aruch says Zaza. But we're learning the halacha now. The, the Mishabur, the Chafetz Chaim says, you, you're allowed to teach halachas. I'm allowed to teach about uh, Lashon Hara, and I can't say, Mutav Shiyu Shogim Ayim Zidim. It's, an, it's a sif in Shulchan Aruch. You're not allowed to clap on Shabbos. That's a sif. But then to go over to somebody, but, by the way, I had this argument on, by my Shabbos meal. They were very upset. They, they didn't hear. A lot of people didn't know about this idea that you walk over to somebody and say, hey, you're over Isidai Raisa. It's mind your own business. What's wrong with you? So I just saw today, some cipher says that in a Doiraisa, you're going to see in the Gemara, the Rabban Doiraisa, in Doiraisa, you must go over to somebody and say, what you're doing is wrong, even if he's going to, even if you think he might hit you and curse you, even if you know he's not going to listen to you. He says, oh, he's not going to listen. But it's Maneinu. No, yeah. Not in Doiraisa. Fine. Next. Where are we? No, we've passed that. Oh, baby, but you see people clap and show. Nobody says anything. Look at this. You're sitting in the alleyway. This is the alley. This is the mavui, and you put a lechi here so you could carry within this area. You shouldn't sit right here by the yellow. Because what if the ball rolls out of your hand into the, into the street? You're going to come get it. By the way, 
it's only sitting over here to the street. But if you sit by your house, right over here by the porch, we're not choyshish. Because over here, Rashi says, there's no, there's no ceiling and there's no, there's no way to differentiate so much between the alleyway and the street. That's the gzera. Okay. But there's people, these women, they take their, I guess it was a thing, take their bucket of water, sit there by the, by the entryway, waiting for their kids to come back from playing. I don't know what. But they sit there with their bucket by the, by the entryway. You just said not to. Ella, here's the aside. Hanach lahem Yisrael, don't bother with them. Mutov shiu shoygigim value mezidim. It's better that they shouldn't be mezid. You don't tell them this this halal. It says in Shulchan Aruch, it's also don't do it. Why? So Rashi says here that something bedover shir giluboy v'lo yachzur b'hem. Something like 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 clapping and, and and drumming. People that are used to it. Go try to change their minds. There's no way you change their mind. Murgal, they have every hat there. They come up with that. They know the Ramosha fights in inside out, backs and forwards, and vite the You're not going to change your mind, so don't bother with them. That's like clapping your hands, which is only said the Rabbanon. Gzeri, you might come. Okay. The rice, uh, you don't say hanaf shalom. You have to tell a person what you're doing is isa the rice is a puzzle. Viloi. Yeah, no, but until what point? On hitting and this, knowing and knowing how much, and, and knowing that knowing a person is not going to listen to you. You know the guy, you know your neighbor. He's not going to listen. He's not a Talmud Chachim that forgot Allah. Yeah, nor a guy that's in Kailo and, he, and he's doing bayrus. He's, by the way, you know, that's also, you're doing it with a kli. Oh, it's on shoulder. You're talking about a, a tough guy that the, he's mezalzal in mitzvahs, and you go over to him, listen, what you're doing now is awesome. Awesome. You go, you go on vacation, sometimes you see, hey, Mr. Yidin doing the, not the best things. They'll eat a little bit uh, in a not such a kosher restaurant, whatever. You know the guy is not going to listen to you? You walk over and say, listen, what you're doing is awesome. You walk away. He might punch you, he might this. You don't know. But once he starts hitting you, not, now you're not mechuyib anymore. <laughs> no, seriously. You know, no? I told you the story with Rabbi Shimshim Pinkos. He made the guy take off his pants. In the middle of the day? Shatnas. He's talking about Shatnas. Okay, let's go. It's very simple. Look, I prove it to you. Even in the Raisa, you don't tell somebody. To add a few minutes to Yom Kippur, is the Raisa. We, most of the men, we go to Shul for Kol Nidre, so we don't have the issue. Women who stay at home might have an issue. They might think, you just look at the clock, whenever Shkia is, I could eat all the way up to Shkia. It's not true. There's a special pasuk that says, you have to do Tosefes, Yom Kippur. It says, Betisha, that Yom Kippur is not on the ninth day, it's on the tenth day. It means that you have to add a little bit to Yom Kippur. How much exactly? Fine. Fine. Says the Gemara, Oma Tchilu Barim and Satevan. You're allowed to take straw out of the pile. So I, I went through the kasha before. Over here it says, there's no mukta when it comes to straw. You're allowed to grab some straw. Mani Rib Shimini. The famous Rib Shimini, the Leslie Mukta. He doesn't, he's makel and not, he doesn't hold the mukta completely. In this case, he doesn't hold the mukta. Amos Seifa. You're allowed to take wood. Asam Le Yehuda. This Le Mukta. We got a problem. You can't say part of the mission is Rabbi Shimon, part of the mission is Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says there is Mukta. You can't take the wood. Says Gemara, We're talking about expensive wood, cedar wood. Ashuche is female cedar. It's expensive stuff. You don't use it stam like to, 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 to light a fire. You build a nice house with it. So it's Mukta. The Mukta Mavs Chasar and Kis. Anything that you're going to have a monetary loss, like a knife of a, of a, of a Shechita, of a Mila. Uh, a nice silver thing. And even in that case, Rabbi Shimon does all the Mukta. Same thing, same idea, but on the Seifa. We start from the back. You're not allowed to remove wood in the backyard. Mukta is backyard. Why? Because it's Mukta. It's the two types of Mukta here. So you see, there's Mukta. This lay Mukta. So it's a contradiction to the beginning. You could take straw. That comes out 
contradiction that it goes that there's no mukta. Which one is it? Says the Gemara, So now we're going to explain the ratio. When it's straw that spoiled, moldy, disgusting straw, the only thing you can do with it is light a fire. Tiv Nisario asked the Gemara, what are you talking about? But Tiv Nisario, Latino, you could use it for something. Use it for cement. This bay kaitzim. The way they made cement, says Rashi, they would step on it, mush it with their hands. They didn't have a, a cement turner, or a cement machine, whatever it's called, a mixer, cement mixer. They did it like this. Now, if it has thorns, you can't use it, so it's worthless, says the Gemara. That's why I'm in the base. Sponsor by MDY Tilum Group for all those who need to do before seeing shorts. Please join us at tilumindav.com and spies when time. Koshnud for the schos for my children, I call it. And Yaakov and Devorah, they should be do well in Eretz Yisrael. And Cheshik and Torah, Mitzvah and Maizim Toivin, and Yerushalayim. Official Mishnah, sponsored by official for Shlomo for Avram Yosef and Chana, says the Mishnah. Unbelievable. In America now, what are they doing? They're taking part of the Sukkos. Nightly, hey, nightly, Maizim and Asuka. You cannot take wood off your Sukkah, break it down. Ela and Asamach. Now, Rashi says we're not talking about Sukkos. Sorry, but we will be talking about Sukkos in a minute. We're talking about Pesach and Shavuos, the two other Yom Tovim. Because a sukkah has other issues. So you cannot remove wood from the sukkah. Now the Gemara right away explains what's going on here. Says the Gemara, Why can't you take it off the top? Because you're doing soicer, you're taking wood from the top of the sukkah. Here, so the Gemara understood that there's a lot of wood up here. And he's grabbing a piece. The Gemara is going to say no. He's taking the piece from the wall. It's up against the wall. But if you're taking from the wall, you're breaking down the, you're doing stira, you're breaking a building. Sorry. The Gemara's kasha is, what's the difference? If it's above, all the way in the top, that's also removed. Who cares how high up the schach is? It's still removing schach. We're, ta- we're not talking about the top. We're talking about the side, and that's okay. Why? So Rashi explains, very simple. If you, you only did a great job here. You see how this is interwoven. It's Arug. Rashi says the Lashon of Arug. This is my wall, this beautiful piece. Now, if I go lean wood up against my wall, it's not part of the wall. It's leaning on my wall. But over here, no matter what you do, if you put more wood on top, Every piece of wood is part of my, my ceiling. It's providing shade. You can't say, oh, it's just the bottom layer is providing shade. The top, everything's providing shade. So any piece I take off, I'm over. But the pieces on the wall, if they're not part of the wall, it's not part, it's not part of my sukkah. So I'm allowed to remove it. No, it's not talking about a wall. If I have a bundle of wood sitting on top of my sukkah, it's not bottled to the sukkah. It's there for storage purposes only. Storage purposes only. I'm allowed to remove a bundle of wood. If it's part of the sukkah, as I said, hey, this should be the schach, then you can't remove it. Doesn't matter how high it is, how thick it is. said in front of You can't take from the top, only from the wall. Rabbi Shimon says it's okay. Vishavin. So, just, I put this together for, for later. It's, it's really not necessary, but it's Kishma. This is the Braise here. I put in tiny words because it didn't fit in the line. Rabbi Shimon is very important. Do not take wood from the, suk, from the top of the sukkah. Next line. Vishavin, and everybody agrees. Vishavin, and everybody agrees. So this is talking about what the blue is talking about, a sukkah on Pesach and Shavuot. The red is talking about on sukkahs. You can't take. What is the green talking about? Next line. If you made it tonight, then I'm going to use it. Luchar is talking about the red. I think Mark is going to say, no, the green is talking about the blue. It's going back to here. That what? If you made it tonight, and he said, I'm going to use the wood, before Yontif, so you're allowed to use the wood from the sukkah. Reb Shimon, Matir, and Reb Shimon says it's okay because Sosar Allah. So let's go back over here. 
Right over here, not doing a sukkah, but he's breaking down. Rav Shimon says he's allowed to break down a sukkah. He says, Gemara Ocha, the sukkah nifel says, Kinon. Rav Oisai, one of the most popular songs, one of the nicest songs ever invented is, Haracha Manu Yakim. I'll sing solo, I don't care. It's not that good of a song. I just. Zog to Gemara. Omer of Nachman Yitzchok. You're allowed to clap today. Now we know what it means. Sing it the whole Yantiv. There's only two boring songs for Sukkot. I don't know. Nobody ever invented a good one. The Harenu is a good one, but it's not really for Sukkot. <laughs> we should do that. <laughs> you have to do it like this. The Simcha has to be like this. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a pretty depressing song, I think. Um, yeah, so we're talking about a Sukkot that fell down. So if a sukkah fell down, you're not breaking it. What's the whole problem? You're breaking, you're not allowed to break your sukkah on, on Yontif. On any, on Pesach also. But it already broke. But the problem is, that's the Tanakam. Tanakam holds, since you couldn't use it before, as Yontif came in, you can't use it even though it fell down. Reb Shimon, the time made the less thing Muktah, but Reb Shimon doesn't hold it that Muktah. Reb Shimon holds that if it fell, it was, you're right, it was Muktah then, but now it, it, it broke, now you can use it. He, do, he doesn't hold of Migu de Skatsoi. The Sanya, and I'll prove it to you. Moisar Hashem, and the same exact idea. You have leftover oil in your candelabra, Shibaner, Shibakara, in a bowl, Osur. Tanakama holds, since all the oil was Osur, you couldn't remove oil while it was burning, it's Osur. So now that the candle went out, it remains Osur. Migu de Skatsoi, since it was Osur for a moment as Yom Tev came in, it's Osur for the rest. Reb Shimon Matar, Reb Shimon says it's not a problem. Says the Gemara Midami. What's the connection between oil and a sukkah? A person has in mind, he knows every single week for the last 25 years, there's always that much oil left on the bottom. Never goes all the way to the bottom. So he's waiting for it to go out. Does he have a clue? He has an idea that a sukkah is going to fall down? He never intended to use the wood. Or Rabbi Yitzchak, you're right. So we have to talk about a very shvach sukkah. It's literally about to fall. He doesn't even use it because he's worried it's going to fall on his head. So that sukkah, he says, oh, I might get to use the wood in, in, in a day or two. Let's wait until it falls. So we had that bright. So, so let's just see. We, we already know what the Gemara is going to say. Let's, we can go through it. Umi mahani batnai. On sukkahs, you're not allowed to use any of the wood. But if you made it tnai, it's okay. Hakol afi tnai. Said, I'm going to use the wood. Umi mahani batnai. Vomer av sheishim surim avikiva. Menayin la tzis sukkah shasurim kol shiva. Shenem ar chaga sukkah shiva siyam nashem. The wood of the sukkah, it says chaga sukkahs. Chag means chagiga. Remember, in case you forget and you come next year to the Israel for sukkahs, to the base of you have to bring three animals: a oilas ria, a chagiga, and a shalmi simcha. One of them is chagiga, chag. Chag in the pasuk is referring to chagiga. Hasukah is referring to the sukkah. So just like the chagiga is a carbon, it has gedusha, and it's for seven days. So to the sukkah, seven days. Gedusha. Sorry, the gedusha lasts forever. Whatever, but the sukkah lasts for seven days. Tanya Rebbe Dovin Seir we have Gdusha on the Sukkah. So he answers the question. The question is, how could you make a Tnai on this Sukkah? This Sukkah is Kaddish for seven days. So what good does it do if I make a Tnai? Oh, I'm going to use it after three days. The Torah says it's Kaddish for seven days. You can't fight with that. So he says, you're right. This green, the Tnai, is not going on the red. We're not talking about Sukkot. We're going back to the beginning over here, that Ein Noit Lemeitzim in a Sukkah, which Rashi explained at the top of the Om, the first line. We're not talking about a Sukkah on Sukkot. We're talking about a Sukkah on Pesach and Shavuos. That you could make a Tnai. Have what? 
There's no Yitzke Tzoy? If you make it nai, no. There's no Migis Ketzoi because it never became Muktzah. It never became, that is, that's exactly what we do. Here the Gemara is going to explain. On a Rashi, we read the Rava, Seva son of Sukkah the Alma, Ava Sukkah the Mitzvah, Lema Hanibat no. A Sukkah on Sukkah, there's no Tnai. The Sukkah the Mitzvah, Loi, you can't make it Tnai, but Tnai, you're going to explain in a second. But Tanya, Sikha kil Chasa, Vitra bikramim ubizdina namai tsuyarim. If you made a beautiful sukkah and you decorated it with different sheets and tsuyarim. Now look at Rashi. I couldn't believe this Rashi. It's Givaldika Rashi. Rashi di Baramaskal Vitra. Vitra Yafa bizdina of a ukramim tsuyarim, beautiful designs and pictures. Kramim bigdi tsivainim, like colorful clothing. Zdinim, what does he say? Levanim shal pishtan. Haha, look at this. This is Dovi Hirschberg's sukkah. You remember from yesterday? This is Dinim Levanim. This is beautiful sukkah. One of a kind. This is Dinim Mam, and she took it out of the Gemara here. Vihisna Aleim Dovi Hirschberg. Vitala by Goizim. Shkedim from LA. Vitala by Goizim. And he hung. You go to these Rebish sukkahs, you see they hang a stroigim and bottles of wine and bottles of oil. It's from this Gemara here. Shkedim, Afarsikim, peaches, very moin, and pomegranates, and rakila, and novim, and grapes, yenois, wine, shmonim, oils, vislosois, and fine flour, vitro, shibolim, and different grain. Also, let's have your mamma, so you don't have a chak. So, Rabbi Yisai, when it comes to decorations, sukkah decorations, sukkah decorations are also to use and be mavatal them from what they are. The entire yantif, even chalamayin. So on Chalamari, you can't go over to your esrig and grab it off the, the sukkah and eat it. But if it falls off on Chalamari, you're allowed to put it back on. If it falls off on Shabbos, you're not allowed to. Why? Because it's mukta. So, Nachamol, if your schach falls off on Yontif, it's mukta. Maybe you could have a guy put it up. If your schach falls off on Chalamari, you could put your schach back on. But you're not allowed to be mevatel from what it is. You can't take your schach and use it for a bed. That you can't do. Then it becomes muktzah for, for that mitzvah. People get confused. Somebody asked me this yantav actually. Could I, could I touch my decoration on Chalamayim? Yes, you could touch your decoration. It's not mukta like Shabbos, you can't touch. The only time you can't touch your decoration is on Shabbos and on yantav. But on Chalamayim, you're allowed to touch decorations, you're just not allowed to take them out of service. You can't take a decoration off the wall and say, okay, now I'm going to use it for something else. That you can't do. And I'm not a rabbi. Stam a guy asked me for no reason. Now, yes, you can make it tonight. You hear this? This is what's going on. If a person says straight out, I am not relinquishing my rights to this, to these decorations. What's the Gemara asking here? At the end of the day, the schach and the, the sukkah are the same. So if you could, if you could, if you could make it nai on, on schach, you can make it, if you can make it nai on decoration, you can make it nai on, on schach. If you can't make it on decoration, you can't make it on, on schach. It's, it should be the same. But if a person goes and says like this, as Yontif comes in, he says, I do not relinquish. These are still my decorations. I want my esrog. I'm going to eat it right now. I'm going to eat it in 10 minutes. So he never made it a decoration. But you cannot do that for a, for a sukkah. You can't say, I'm not relinquishing my rights to this wood and I'm going to be using this wood tomorrow. Why? Because you can't break it down, says Rashi. You cannot break down a sukkah. It's soicer. Food, you can just grab off the, 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 the sukkah and eat it. So if you say specifically, I'm not letting these be decorations. These are not decorations. These are mine. They're still mine. They're in my rishos. Then you're allowed to use it. Allah says, look at the cholok dusha alayu. It's got soicer shiva. The riff argues, the grub brings him on the side. He argues. Let's just finish to the bottom. Very easy. If I have seven esroigim, one for each day of sukkahs, as you finish the mitzvah, you could eat it right away. The only machlaikis is I have to wait one day or one minute. But at the end of the day, they all agree you don't have to wait until the end of the yantiv. I could break up sukkahs into seven days. How come I can't do it over here with the, with the, with the sukkah? 
You cannot shake an esrog at night, so therefore every day is an individual day. So I can make it tonight for that specific day. But the, the entire sukkah is one long sukkah. So you cannot break it up per day. You can only break up a strike per day. Have a wonderful day. And welcome everybody. Go over to Rachamim Epstein and give him a big shalom aleichem.